how to record guitar. A simple question with maybe a more elaborate answer than you thought. But these one, two, three, four, five, six tips will tell you all about what's important to know. We can either record the guitar with microphones, for instance, by putting it in front of an acoustic guitar or a guitar amplifier. Or we can plug our guitar straight into the computer and for electrics use software to emulate a guitar amp, for instance. But let's start with the microphone situation, since that's probably the most common practice. We need to, one, capture it. I'll make another video about mics, but for now let's quickly distinguish three types. The ribbon, condenser and dynamic microphones. All three use different methods of capturing the sound, which by itself is just moving air, and turn it into electricity. All three types have different pros and cons, but in the end you can use all three to record guitars. And it's up to your taste which one you choose. If you start recording electric guitars, I recommend you start with a dynamic mic, the Shure SM57 for example. And if you just record acoustics, or maybe want to add vocals to it, you might want to consider a condenser mic. For example, the SE Electronic X1. A condenser mic needs power to function. Dynamic and ribbons do not. This power is called phantom power, which runs through the cable into the mic. More on this later. So what to do with the mic? Two, connect it. Most microphones are connected with the so-called XLR cable. This is the industry standard for mics. So it would be pretty handy if you can plug it straight into the computer, right? But the first thing we need to overcome is that the signal that is coming out of the microphone is analog. But the computer only understands digital signals. Basically just a bunch of zeros and ones. For that we need an AD or a DA converter. Analog to digital or digital to analog. Also known as a DAC. Haven't heard of that? Well, you're using one right now. You can hear me, right? When you play a song or a video, which is in digital format on your phone or on your computer, it comes out as an analog signal, as sound we can hear through the speakers. The DAC converted it from ones and zeros to an actual analog audio signal. To record guitars or any audio signal, we use it the other way around. We need to convert the analog microphone signal to a digital format the computer understands. But before we turn it into something digital, we need to three, make it louder. Because the signal that comes out of the microphones is really, really weak. For this we need a preamp. We need to add a lot of gain, which is the amount that the preamp amplifies the signal to the microphone. Mostly somewhere between 30 and 60 decibels. We need an AD converter, a preamp. Jeez, that's a lot already. Wait, don't worry. Often these two things are combined into one device, especially the more affordable units. Here is one, the Mellow Audio TS Mini, which has just one preamp and costs around 120 bucks. Here is one, which I use for recording, uh, which is the RME Fireface UCX, which has two microphone inputs and a whole bunch of line inputs. These things are called audio interfaces or sound cards and are connected via USB, Firewire or Thunderbolt to your computer. So now we made sure the guitar signal is captured, made louder with the preamp and turned into a digital signal by the AD converter. Great, it's now being sent through the USB cable into the computer? What? And now it's all up to the software you want to use to four, record it. And again, we have a lot of options. The software used to record stuff is usually referred to as a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation. Because mostly when you record something, you also want to edit or process it to turn it into exactly the thing you want. The first commercially available software DAW on the market was Pro Tools. Nowadays there are over 20 notable DAWs on the market. And here are the most used ones. Ableton Live, my personal favorite. Cubase that I also use. Presonus One, Pro Tools, Logic Pro. In the beginning, Reason. it really doesn't matter which one you use. But here's the golden tip. A lot of audio interfaces are shipped with a copy of light versions of DAWs. For instance, the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, which is a perfect beginner interface, comes with Ableton Live Lite and a Pro Tools version. And in the beginning, all the light versions will be more than enough to get you going. When you're hooking up the mic to a sound card, it's important to use the right amount of gain. 
This can either be set up in the interface itself, or you need to open the driver of the sound card to control the inputs and the outputs. Play as loud as you go and adjust the gain so that you're maxing out somewhere between minus 12 or minus 60 dB. If you have too much gain, the signal will clip, which is the worst thing that can happen. Remember we talked about phantom power? This is the place where you can turn it on or off. It's the 48 volts knob. Nowadays the noise levels are really low, so there is no reason to record it as hot as possible. So now we need to tell the software on what channel the guitar is coming in. This could be any of the inputs from the sound card. I put my guitar, which is now my vocal, into input 1. So that's the one that's selected. And there we see my vocal coming into the DAW. Hello. 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 In your software you've got the option of recording multiple tracks on top of each other. So if we would record guitars and vocals simultaneously with two different mics, we could select two different inputs on two different tracks. And now arm the track, which means the track we're recording on will start recording from the selected input. And there we are. And that's it. The audio is now recorded into the computer. Congratulations, you made it through the most boring video ever. You are great. But we can't really quit this video before we talked about six more boring stuff. A few crucial things to know when recording are sample rate and bit depth. Because the audio is stored digitally, we can specify the quality of it. The higher the quality, the larger the file size and the more effort it takes for the computer to work with. Audio is a waveform and the more precise we draw that waveform, the better the quality. Let's start recording with a sample rate of 44.1 kHz and a bit depth of 24. If you ever start recording proper songs and know on what medium you're about to share it, you may bump this up to higher values. If you're planning to play with modeling software, there is a really bad word we need to talk about. The L word. Latency. This is basically the moment between when the DAW receives the signal and outputs it again so you can hear it. So when you play guitar, the signal has to go through the amp and the FX in the computer. And then it comes out of the speakers. If the latency is more than just a few milliseconds, this can be real annoying. Key is to have the right balance between keeping the buffer size low, but not so low that the audio starts crackling and popping. On some systems, it's unfortunately impossible to get the latency below the annoying threshold. And I gotta say, I never really get used to this. Even if the latency is just uh, somewhere between four or eight milliseconds, you can still feel it when you play. This is one real big downside of the whole software emulated guitar plugins. I didn't really talk about this in my previous video because it wasn't just about the plugins, it was also about the hardware part, but I do wanna raise the question about when this problem will be overcome. I started recording stuff around 15 years ago and to my experience, it hasn't really developed that much. Everything is much more stable, certainly for Windows system. But still, the latency. This makes me worry a bit about where it's going, but yeah, let's end on a happy note. Recording guitars is one of the best things you can do to get better. You have to keep time, you have to listen to yourself over and over again. So you think twice before making that mistake again. It also teaches you about when you really master something. I know I used to record way and way too early, way before I really knew the part. This took me countless of takes after which I just was too frustrated and just gave it up. Luckily, I know better now. So share your experience with gear, other tips and tricks, and questions of course, in the comment section. And I'm sure we'll help each other out, right? You are invited to see a sneak peek from my upcoming guitar course, a video about how to choose the right guitar. You get all the advice I'm sharing with my students about which guitar will be the best to start out on, the difference between nylon or steel strings, etc. You can access this video for free at learnpracticeplay.com. If you like this video, make sure to just press the thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done that already. And oh, if you really like this channel, please hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified by my videos. Or check out my Patreon page where you can support me if you really 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 dig what i do anyways have a wonderful day cheers it's now being sent through the usb cable great it's now being sent through the usb cable Great. It's now being sent through the USB cable. <laughs>